Good morning, Central Christian Center. Jake here with your announcements. First of all, I want to remind you that tonight we will be continuing on with our Sunday evening class series, but we'll be doing something a little bit different, that tonight we're going to be showing a video, a documentary um, called the Emmanuel uh, Documentary. And this is, uh, this is about um, the Charleston church shooting that happened a few years ago where nine church members were shot in a prayer meeting, um, shot and killed in a prayer meeting. And, uh, and just the forgiveness that the, the survivors had towards this, uh, this person that, that committed the act of terror on them, it's just remarkable. And the media did not touch on that aspect of this, but this video will, um, and uh, we may have some time for discussion after that, but this video will bless you. That's tonight at 6 o'clock over in the Fellowship Hall. Also, teens will be having service at 6 o'clock tonight as well. Um, we won't be able to pick up anybody for church tomorrow night, um, but we can take them home. So if you can get here um, tonight at 6 o'clock, then we can bring you home um, after we're done. Uh, and then at 5 o'clock, we will be having our leadership and board meeting. Normally, it's just a board meeting, um, but this time we are including anybody that is in any leadership in any area of the church, whether that be children's church, whether that be the youth group, whether that be uh, in the praise team, wherever it is that you are in a, in a position of leadership um, or you think you need to be or you think you are, it, we just want you here. Um, we have some great things to talk about. We have some encouraging things to talk about, and we just want you to be a part. So um, board members, if you're not able to make it, if you would please let Pastor or Gary know, that would be greatly appreciated. Um, that's tonight at 5 o'clock. And then Chris is going to talk about the marriage retreat here in just a moment. But we want to start telling you about the woven many joyful hearts, okay? Um, this is going to be like a half-day event. Um, joyful hearts in the past has been a couple of days, um, but this is going to be a half-day. And this is going to be about unlocking peace. It starts at 8 o'clock in the morning. Ladies, um, this world is full of all of these sorts of answers for anxiety and depression and just not having peace. You see it on the bookshelves, you see it on the news, you see it in all these documentaries and all over social media, and everybody is talking about um, anxiety and depression and how to deal with that. Okay, but we have an answer um, to anxiety, to depression, to all of that. We have, a, we have the key to unlock the peace, the Prince of Peace. And they're going to talk about that at this mini conference. So that is August 13th. Ladies, you need to be inviting all of the ladies that you know, um, family, friends, ladies that you work with. You just need to be a part of this event. It will bless you. I promise. Um, and I think that's all that I have for today. But I hope that everybody had a great weekend. I hope you have a good Sunday. And remember that life is better with you. Hey, uh, and, and Chris just wants to emphasize, if you haven't signed up for the marriage retreat, do it! It's like right down to the wire. It's just in a few weeks away, so uh, it's going to be a great time. Would you stand as we begin the service in prayer? Uh, sign up, sign up. The kids are outside. They're going to, well, they're not outside quite yet. They start over there, then they're going to go out. They're going to play in the water. They're going to eat watermelon. It's going to be fantastic. Uh, uh, and in here... Um, we're going to have an experience with God in here. Uh, no matter what that looks like, it will be an experience with God. Uh, but even out there, when they're playing in the water, make no mistake, they're having an experience with God. Can you say amen? Uh, join me. Father, we thank you so much that you are constantly involved in our lives. God, that, we ne that you never leave us behind. You never forsake us. You never abandoned us. God, I thank you. I thank you for being with us. God, this morning we lift up our hearts. We lift up our prayers to you. We lift up our minds. We focus on you. We love you this morning as we worship, as we pray, praise, as we uh, love you. And we thank you, we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Good morning. Who's ready to have some fun in the house of the Lord today? We can do that. Nothing says that we have to come in here and put on the serious face. 
kids can have fun. I mean, it says have childlike faith. So let's have some childlike faith today. We're going to praise and worship the Lord. We're going to have fun. I want to see smiles. I want to see hands clapping. Let's get excited this morning. Come on, guys. who are going to serve communion, go ahead and come, and we'll sing, and if you would, just hold it, we'll all take it together, and uh, good to see all of you. I'm trying to get dressed here, but <laughs> see if I'd have wore her Hawaiian shirt, I wouldn't have had all this trouble, but, uh, but, but anyway, so uh, hold it, and we'll take it all together in a minute. Cleansing power revealed. 
I'm just going to sit there and listen. Praise the Lord. Isn't Jesus wonderful? You know, I've uh, I've gotten, i thinking this morning, but I've, I've gotten in a habit here. I've been taking communion pretty regular at home in the morning early. and uh, I just do it. I just take it to love Jesus a little bit, you know, just to thank him. He said, remember, when you, ta- when you do it, remember what I did. Remember me. And, and so I just, in the mornings, I just take it and I just worship him and love him a little bit and just thank him for all the good that he's did. And, and you know, we've got, uh, uh, we've got a pretty good deal and, uh, because of what he did. And so today as we take it, let's just love him. He, he's, he's worthy of our praise and our love. And uh, gosh, he's so good. I had little, little girls down in the lobby when I come in, had them singing Jesus Love Me before, before they walked away there. And they, but uh, we're having uh, water day over there, and I know we got a lot of big kids out there too. So, uh, but uh, anyway, let's partake of this. Let's partake of the body. Thank you, Jesus, for that body that was broken for us. Thank you for the blood that you shed for us. Now, just tell him you love him. Just tell him you love him. Don't just thank it. Just tell him. I love you, too. Let's, let's praise him for a few minutes. 
case you haven't noticed, I got a theme today for the song set with water. Praise you, Father. Water is used to cleanse everything. I mean, we had rain yesterday. And I know many of us were out there dancing in it and just worshiping God for and thanking God for the rain. We need more of it, but it's a renewing thing. And then my favorite verse on this next song, we sing it, it's an oldie, it's a goodie, it's one of our fallbacks if we have to mess up, if we mess up a song, but on the second verse, we talk about a fountain. And the words of that second verse, Crystal, could you put them up real quick? Because I'll mess them up if I don't get them right. It says there's a fountain and it's full of grace, and it flows from Emmanuel's veins. Go on to the next one. It came and it healed me. Healed me from the top of my head to the tips of my toes. And it refreshes me. And I believe it refreshes me this, in the opposite direction, from the tips of my toes to the top of my head. Because if you think about it, when you step up into the baptistry, into the river, wherever it is you got baptized, your feet go in first, right? I mean, unless you're really excited, I've seen some really excited kids that go head first, but for the most part, you're walking into that water, you're sitting in it, and then you're laid back in it, and then it washes you, and you come up, and it's washed all your sins away. So remember, it's going to heal you from the top of your head to the tips of your toes, and it's going to refresh you from the tips of your toes to the top of your head, and it is going to wash you your sins away. So I want to see some exuberance on verse 2, if anything else, because that is what the water, even though we're playing in it, and it's good to play in, but that is what God created water to do, to wash away dirt and grime. And sin is dirt and grime, am I right? There's nothing worse than dirt and grime. So we're going to sing about the river and how it's going to wash us clean. Come on, guys. It's full of grace. 
so much for your sweet, sweet water.
us deeper into your word, that we get a new and refreshing message from you today, that you are using our pastor as a vessel to communicate to his congregation, and then we will become vessels to communicate to our community and our world. Heavenly Spirit, Holy Spirit, I invite you into this place. I invite you into each and every heart today. And I thank you for the renewing of our spirits and minds. In Jesus' name, amen. Church, would you love that? Praise the Lord. <laughs> Praise the Lord. And if you want the gentleman, go ahead and come. Let's receive the offering. Uh, welcome all of you here today. Glad you're here. We got uh, water big splash going on outside and I think the news media is out there and everything so we're we've got a big day here and uh, glad you're here glad all of you are watching online uh, and on TV we uh, we're so thankful for you also and uh, want to welcome you to be in this service and we're grateful for you we we give now to to the Lord because he first gave to us we give to him, not because we have to, but we give him because we love him. And uh, I don't know about you, but I don't, I can't ever pay him back for all he's done for me. And uh, we don't really try, but this is a token of our love for him. And the Bible says that Jesus, our high priest, takes this offering and worships the Father with it. So, Father, we love you today and we thank you. We worship you. We we, we thank you the, for giving us the ability to give. Lord, I thank you for blessing my people. I thank you for being, doing big things in their life. I thank you for extra money coming to them, God, and it's all because of you, and we give you all the credit and all the praise for it. We love you, Lord, and we're thankful. Right now, in your name, Jesus, I take authority over the enemy, this this. Angels, you put a guard on this money, and then not a penny of this will ever be used in the kingdom of darkness again, but it'll only be used in the kingdom of heaven, and it'll circulate and circulate. And God, we give you praise for that, and we thank you for that in Jesus' name. Amen. We have a leadership meeting at 5 o'clock. Uh, need all my deacons there, and 
And if you're a leader, we need you there. How about that? So praise God. Praise God. Both say something else, but be darned if I can remember what it is. So let me just read you a scripture. I want to talk to you today just for a few minutes. Can you give me about 30 minutes? And the rest I'll just take, but if you'll give me 30 minutes, I'll I'll do my best. Uh, but uh, I want to talk to you about living by faith today. So, Father, help me. Holy Spirit, help me today. And let me say the things that will help us. And we're grateful to you, and we thank you. In Jesus' name. Holy Spirit, you're wonderful. How about that praise and worship group? Weren't they, weren't they terrific? Man. Got to apologize to you all for I was supposed to be here Tuesday night with you, and I had an emergency come up. I couldn't couldn't make it, but Chris came and took care of it for me. And anyway, let me read you leave Hebrews eleven one. I've got in my notes. I've got Hebrew eleven hundred and one, but it's just uh, Hebrews one. If you got your Bible, go ahead and open it up and look at it. I know we'll have it on the screen here, but just something good about. Bible, holding it in your hand, and I get busy and get so occupied doing it all on my notebook that I don't, I'll forget this sometimes, and man, then when I pick it up and open it, it's just like, it just comes alive, so anyway, read your Bible, open your Bible if you have it, Hebrews 11.1 1 says, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen, Yet, yet. Now, I added yet there, but I have permission to add it because of verse 7. Verse 7 says, By faith Noah, being divinely warned of things not yet seen, moved with godly fear, prepared an ark for the saving of his household, by which he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness, which is according to faith. It's the evidence or the confidence. We're just kind of trying to find faith a little bit here. Are you all going to listen to me for a few minutes? I'm going to try to, I'm going to, try to give you something that will help you. Uh, it helped me when I began to study it. It's the evidence or the confidence of things not seen yet. Now, we have a tendency, if we don't see it, we don't believe it. That's the natural way to look at things. And so when we're believing God for something, if we don't see it, if we don't sense it, if we don't feel it, uh, if, if we sometimes don't really believe we have it. We hope we do, but we don't. You know, I like to say that faith... It's the evidence or the confidence that I have what I'm praying for before I see it. Is that simple enough? So does that, does that line up with the word? You know, what, is, what, is, what does the Bible say about God's faith, the God kind of faith? Well, in verse 3 here in, in Hebrews 11, it says, By faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God, so that the things which are seen were not made of things which are visible. That's pretty powerful. God spoke into existence. He didn't have anything to take it from. He spoke the word, and the things that weren't seen all of a sudden were seen. God kind of faith. In, in Romans 7, 4.17, it says this. It says, and it is written, I have made you, talking now, he's talking about Abraham. God saying, I've made you the father of many nations in the presence of him, of, of him whom he believed, and that was God. And this, is, this is what it says God does. God gives, who gives life to the dead and calls those things which do not exist as though they did. Hmm. 
People think you're crazy. You start claiming things and start saying things. People in the natural, the unsaved people go, well, those people are just crazy down there. Well, I'm hoping that you'll hear what I say today and that we'll all just begin to be a little bit crazy for God. Is that all right? All right? Now, I'm trying not trying to not give you a stuffy message here. I just want to talk some common sense stuff. I'll go slow. Let me read that verse 17 out of the Amplified Classic. It says, As it is written, I have made you father of many nations. He was appointed our father, talking about Abraham, in the sight of God whom he believed, who, God, who gives life to the dead, and he speaks of the non-existent things that he has foretold and promised as if they already existed. Now, it's important that you get that phrase. He, he speaks of non-existent things, the things you can't see yet, but he's foretold them and promised them. And he talks like, they're all, like they already exist. Hmm. Well, now today we're not going to be talking about positive thinking. I think it's good to be positive. I will say this. I'm positive that the Word of God's the truth. I'm positive that if I line up with God's Word, things happen in my life. I'm positive about that. But I'm not just saying today that we just start thinking things, thinking positive things, and they start happening. They start happening if they're in line with what God said. Hmm. <clears throat> we, 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 you ever hear anybody say, well, I'll believe it when I see it. Matter of fact, I said that the other day. Somebody said, it's going to rain. I said, I'll believe it when I see it. Wasn't much faith in that, was there? But God went ahead and let it rain at my house anyway. But, uh, wasn't, wasn't long enough, but I'm very thankful for every drop of it. It was great. Uh, let me read 11.1 1 out of the Amplified, real quick, Amplified Classic. It says, now faith is the assurance, the confirmation, the title deed of the things we hope for being the proof of things we do not see and the conviction of their reality Faith perceiving as real fact what is not revealed to our senses. Now, it's important that we understand that. Faith is the currency of the kingdom of God. It's how we are able to reach out of this physical realm. It's able to reach into the spiritual realm and pull things into the physical realm. Now, people think not, that if you're not saved, you just think, well, that's crazy. Well, count me crazy. Faith is currency. I mean, you know, how many know the Bible says that when we give, it's laid up in our heavenly bank account? That heavenly bank, it isn't going to do us any good when we get to heaven. We don't need it when we get to heaven. When we need to tap into that bank account is now. What about healing? What about all the other things that God's promised? Faith is how we do that. Faith isn't just a man. It's, it's not just a message. Well, they preach that faith message down there. It's not a movement. Faith is a way of living. <laughs> it's a way of we of exercising faith in what God has already promised. You need to get that. What did we just read? It said that God, he, God, speaks of the non-existent things that he has foretold and promised as if they already existed. He speaks of your health as though you're already healed. He speaks of your, your prosperity as if it's already fact. The things that he has promised to him, the issue is settled. 
Faith empowers us to believe for anything God has promised. Now get it, get it. Anything you need or want or what God has called you to do, faith empowers us to believe for that because God's promised it. Not going too fast, am I? Might help if we just talk about faith a little bit. Just tell you some things about faith. Now listen, because I'm going to say this stuff quick. Faith does not move God to do something that he doesn't want to do. I've heard people say that. I've heard preachers preach that. Your faith will move God. It'll move God if it's what he wants to do. You need to get, we, we need to get it settled in our mind. Uh, we're not God's boss. He's our boss. Huh? And, uh, you know, we're the tail, and we don't wag the dog. The dog wags us, okay? Faith is not something that, 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 that moves God to do something he doesn't want to do. Faith accesses or appropriates whatever promises God has already made to us. Let me say that again. Faith accesses or appropriates whatever promise God has already made to us. Did you hear that back there? If he promised it in here, faith is how you access it. Any promise that's in the word... That's why it's important to know the Word. That's why it's important. You don't just you don't just spend time reading the Bible for brownie points. No, you don't just spend time reading. I mean, when you get to heaven, there's not a star up there that he puts on your chart and says, this is because you read the Bible. No, we read the Bible because it's the living Word of God, and as we read it, it changes us and does stuff inside of us, and it, and it causes us to believe. Romans 10, 17 says, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word. Doesn't it? I like the way Keith Moore says it. He says, faith comes by hearing and hearing, and hearing, and hearing, and hearing, and hearing, and hearing, and hearing the Word. There's just something about when you hear it, you read it, you hear it, you see it, and there comes a time in your life where something inside of you clicks and you really believe it down in here. I'm telling you this today because a lot of people don't really understand what real Bible faith is all about. And the enemy tries to confuse our thinking. Uh, a lot of people, a lot of people just think it's confession. Well, we know confession is part of it. But it's not just confession. <clears throat> we think it's about things. Faith is how I get things. Well, now your faith will get you the things of God that he's promised. But it's not about things. I remember, I remember a time in our life and, and we were all learning about faith and, 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 and we judged each other's spirituality by how many things we had. There's still people doing that. Hmm. What a what a waste. Some people just think it's a movement. Yeah, those faith people down there. Well, it is a movement if you move it, if you use it. 
but God has made promises in his word, and we access those promises. We access the kingdom of God. We access God's way of thinking with our faith. Faith pleases God. You see that in both the Old Testament and the New Testament. Uh, Hebrews 11 verse 6 says, But without faith it's impossible to please him, for he who comes to God must believe that he is and that he's a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. We all know that verse. But how do we please him then? The Bible says the just shall live by faith. In fact, it says that four times. It says it in Romans 1.17, Galatians 3.11, Hebrews 10.38, and Habakkuk 2.4. So how do we live by it? What, what about faith? Now, now some things to remember about faith. Faith Faith doesn't try to earn something from God. Faith is believing, believing what God has already said, believing that it's true, believing that if he said it, it's for me. Faith is not just leaving it up to God. You know, there, there, there are extremes in every teaching and every revelation. Uh, you can get carried away. If you carry any revelation to an extreme, you can wind up in error. I've seen it happen over and over. Somebody gets a Bible revelation. It's founded in the Scripture. And they go to extremes. The revelation of, of salvation, the, the revelation of discipleship, the revelation of deliverance, of faith, of prosperity, and of grace. Taking these ideas, these revelations to an extreme, and we end up, we end up all, all crossways. But the thing is, when you, when you are off in error, you don't really know you're in error. The devil just has you. And we have people running around saying things that God said that God didn't say. Hmm? Th this, is, this is how we divide the truth. This is how we divide what we think. This is how we separate truth from lie. Read in Hebrews 4. It's sharper than a two-edged sword. It divides the things. It'll keep us straight. When you carry anything to an extreme, you can get off in error. Uh, you know, the devil, he, can't, he might not be able to get us off into gross sin, so he'll just settle to, to try to get us off in some error. Uh, I mean, no, a half-truth will do you more harm than anything. I mean, a, a truth that has just enough of the, re, of, the, of the word in it to make it sound right. Faith is not just believing it's up to God. Well, it's just all up to God. I mean, hey, listen, he, he's got this all taken care of. Just whatever, you know, when I walk out the door, whichever way I go, that's the way God wants me to go. Faith is not believing that it's just all up to God. Calvinism, fatalism, you know, whatever will be, will be. If it happened, it must be God. Extreme, going to an extreme in the sovereignty of God. You know, just everything that happens in your life is God's will for your life. Folks, that is not true. Now, he will take everything that happens in our life, good or bad, 
and he'll work it out for our good. But everything that happens isn't God's, it wasn't God's plan for you to get sick. It isn't God's plan for you to be poor. It isn't God's plan for you to be discouraged, depressed. So the enemy comes in and, and, and warps this stuff. But we can rest assured, the Bible says that anything that happens to us, good or bad, God will take it and use it for our good. God doesn't have to make you sick to teach you something. It's true you might have learned something from being sick. I did. I don't want to be sick no more. God doesn't need pain to change you. He wants to change you with love. Predestination doesn't mean what we've been taught denominationally. I have my doctorate from a, from a university that denominationally teach it. <clears throat> Well, God has a plan for your life, and, you know, whatever happens is, uh, you know, that's part of his plan. Well, yes, he, he does have a plan for your life, but you find that plan in the Word. You with me? You have, the thing, he has a plan for your life, but you have to choose whether you're going to meet God and follow his plan. You have to choi choose. A good way to understand predestination. God has a plan for you. He's predestined a plan for you. But it's up to you whether you tap into it or not. He'll keep dealing with you. He'll keep causing things in your, hap in your life to happen so that you'll, that you'll go with his plan, but you ultimately have the choice. You have the free will whether to do what God's telling you to do or not. It's up to you and to me whether we follow his plan for us. We can take grace to an extreme. Uh, you know the difference between fashion and fads? Fashion is stable. Fads a, a Hawaiian shirt. Uh, sorry I didn't wear one. Nobody reminded me, but I didn't have one anyway. I gave all my Hawaiian shirts to the Goodwill, and I thought I am not buying another one of those. I hated them all the time I had them. I'm not going to buy another one. Kind of wish I'd have kept one, though. Fashion is stable. Fads come and go. Hmm? Same thing in the spiritual realm. Fads, the, the word is stable, but fads, winds of doctrine, come and go. Extreme grace, years ago, Somebody had a revelation that everybody's already saved. Uh, now, through the years, we've changed the cover of the book, but the deception is still the same. You know, and it said everybody's saved, everybody's going to heaven, even the devil. Some of you younger ones might not remember that, but... And it just went from one title to another. Uh, back in the 70s, I think it was called Ultimate Reconciliation. Then, then they called it Universalism. And now, I haven't checked, but I think maybe now it's, or recently, it was the Doctrine of Exclusion. They're basically all the same. Say everybody's saved and everybody's going to heaven. I heard Oprah say it, and this is part of it. There are many ways to God. 
Well, not according to the Bible. Jesus said there's only one way. He said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. Hmm. How many have been deceived? I was in, uh, I'm thinking it was in Boston. Been way back about 2000, right after the towers, or right before the towers fell, whatever year that was, 2 or 201, whenever it was. Uh, and I was walking through a little shop and, and I, and, uh, somehow the shop owner there and we talked and I, before I, you know, before I knew it, I was telling him, talking about Jesus and being saved and, and he came out and he said, you know, we're, we're all saved. We're all already saved. And I really had never heard that. <laughs> but I mean, this is years later after this error came out and, and, and can you imagine how many people are being deceived? Years later, he's still being deceived. How many people, before, he, before I left, I told him the truth, but he didn't want to hear it. He didn't believe it. How many, well, you know, I love God, and he knows I love him, and he knows my heart. He knows I'm a good person, and I just believe it's going to all work out. Well, it's going to work out if you receive Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior. It'll work out, I promise you. Huh? But you're not going to get there because you're good. So it doesn't matter how good you are. You have to receive a price that was given for you. His name's Jesus. Deception. Are, are you hearing what I'm saying? I'm, I'm trying to not get off. Grace is what God has already provided. You're saved by grace through faith, the Bible says. You understand what that means? Faith accesses the grace. I heard Happy Caldwell say something that kind of uh, helped me understand. He said there's a legal side to redemption and there's a vital side. The legal side is what God has already done. He's already provided a plan of salvation. And the Bible says whosoever will. So you have to choose the plan. The legal side, are you with me? I'm not boring you. The legal side is what God's already done. He's already saved you. He's already healed you. He's already blessed you. He's already delivered you. He's already provided for you. When Jesus died on that cross, it was done. But the vital side of redemption is your faith. You know, you're working it out. I know the Bible says work out your own salvation. You're working it out. You're, you're, you're daily living. You're, uh, how you approach the legal side. Legally, everything that we've ever need, that we'll ever need has already been provided. But our faith is how we access it. Does that help it be a little simple, simpler? Okay, so now let's, let's get back what we're talking about here then. You can get off with all kinds of things. The devil will do everything he can to get you off track. But listen, it doesn't matter. Get back to talking about faith. doesn't matter how much you believe something. If it's not in the Bible, if God didn't say it, it's not the truth. That's why that he'll just try to get you a little bit off. Just He'll put just enough truth in something to make it sound good to you.
our confession. We get off with that sometimes. You know, I remember the name it and claim it days. We thought anything we anything we said, God was going to do it for us. You know, come on, God, jump. I just use my faith, jump. Doesn't work. If you are saying and confessing what God said, yes, it works. If you're confessing it and believing it, it works. Hmm? See, living by faith is just walking with God. It's believing what he said is true. It's trusting what he said. It's using our faith to access what he has promised. Hmm. Do you understand something? God's not holding anything back. He's not trying to hold stuff back from us. Wait till we earn it. He's trying to give it to us. And he says, I've given you a measure of faith so that you can access it. Just believe it. Jesus said, if you can believe, all things are true. Or all things are possible, if you can believe it. Hmm. Let me read you out of, out of Hebrews chapter 4. Chapter 4.14 says, Seeing then that we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast to our confession." Well, what should our confession be? What is our confession? Well, our confession is we believe in Jesus Christ. He's our Lord. But our confession, what we hold to is, is whatever we're praying for, whatever this word says, whatever we're believing for. Hold fast to it. Well, I've been praying for a long time. Nothing's happened. Hold fast to it. If you're, if you're praying what God said, if you're praying what he promised, it can't help but come to pass. Do you understand God doesn't really operate in time like we know it? Huh? I mean, uh, I, I used this example a week or two ago, but, but in, ja in Daniel chapter 10, uh, Daniel's praying, asking God for some answers, and, 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 and 21 days... After 21 days, an angel shows up. But he says something interesting. He said, the very first time when you first prayed, God heard you and he sent the message. But I've just had to fight to get here. And I've been fighting the enemy to get here to bring you the message. You can read that for yourself. You understand, he's not trying to hold stuff back. He's not trying to, to get you to prove your worthiness, to prove, uh, you know, that you deserve it or to prove that you're serious about it. He's trying to give it to you. Just believe. Huh? Just believe. Everything he has, he's made available to us through our faith. Jesus in John 16 said, hey, everything I have is yours. He said, and hey, and everything, everything Father has, he's given it to me. So, so let me say that again. Everything I have is yours. He's not holding back anything. Well, what does the enemy do? He tries to get us to believe that that saying and believing what you're, what you're wanting and needing is silly. How many ever took a faith stand? Don't you even have to raise your hand, but you ever took a stand of faith and, and, and you're praying and a thought just came to you, man, this is pretty silly to believe this could happen. Well, God didn't tell you to do that. God didn't tell you it's silly. God didn't tell you, hey, just Stand. After you've done all the stand, just stand. Just keep on. He'll get us to get us to you know thinking if I can somehow 
I'll prove that I'm good enough. If I can, if I can somehow earn this, he'll give it to me. Not what the Bible says. It's not what you do. It's what he did. Is it okay with you? I'm hot. I'll show you my Hawaiian shirt here. Oh, that feels a lot better. If I would have remembered, I would have worn my shorts, man. That would have, that would have really been a treat. Huh? He, 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 he'll, can I just tell you something? None of us are good enough to deserve anything God has. And so he said, since you're not good enough, I'll send my son to die on the cross, and he'll be good enough for you. Now, if you'll just believe in him, if you'll just believe, if you just believe and accept and receive, it'll be yours. Gosh, well, that sounds too easy. I know. He wasn't trying to make it hard. We're the ones that try to make it hard. Hmm? He'll get me to believe in that I don't deserve it. You're right. I don't deserve it. You don't deserve it. But because of what Jesus did, Jesus deserves it. And I'm in Jesus, so I deserve it. Not on my account. It's on his account. You with me? I'm just trying to get us. I want us to get back where we can just realize that faith isn't hard. Faith is simple. If you can just get this word in your heart, it makes you believe. And when you believe, stuff starts happening. You don't deserve it. He'll, he'll use somebody else's experience to discourage you or get you to quit. Well, you know that they tried it and they died. Well, if they were saved, they didn't die. They're just with Jesus. So stick that in your pipe and smoke it. He'll get us to thinking about our own past experiences. Well, you know, you, you, you tried that once before and it didn't work, and it's probably not going to work this time. Well, wait a minute, maybe it will. Huh? If you try something, if you try, you at least got a 50% chance it'll work. If you don't try, you got zero chance. I tell people when you get to a crossroads and you don't know which way to go, go one way. Don't just stand there. Pick one. If you go the wrong way, the Holy Spirit will tell you and he'll get you right back going the right way. Hmm. You get us to believe in a partial truth. Like we already talked about, he'll get us to... Ten, to Time, 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 well, you know, if it was going to happen, it would have already happened. I mean, you've been believing this for years. You've been believing for this for years, and look at you. Well, you see what he's doing? The battlefield's our mind. He's trying to get us to change our mind. When you know that you know that you know that you know it happens. Hmm? It doesn't always happen the way that I want it to or the way that I think it should have. But it isn't long after that that I understand because he shows me what's going on. You understand? It's from walking with him, walking with him, working out my salvation, trying it. That didn't work, Lord. What He said, well, you know, you need to tweak that a little bit. You need to, you, you did that, you need to, he'll talk to you. He'll help you. Huh? But, but stay rooted and grounded in the word. Huh? Because in Hebrews 12, 4, 12, that's where it says it's sharp. It's, it's a sharper than a two-edged sword. It'll divide truth from fiction. It'll, it'll divide the things. It'll, 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 it'll work on your thoughts. It'll show you what to think right. Well, it's not how forceful you are when you pray. 
It's how much you believe and trust God, what he said. Hmm? Sometimes I just have to go, God, I just don't know. I just, I just don't know. I don't know what's going on. Listen, you don't have to beg God. But can I be honest? Sometimes I beg him. Huh? He hears me when I'm begging. He's touched with the feelings of my infirmities. And he even moves when I beg him. I just didn't have to beg him to get him to move. Huh? What I'm saying is it's okay to be you. Just get in this thing with God and walk. Forget it all. If you don't get all the I's dotted and all the T's crossed, God can still do it for you if he wants to. It doesn't mean we shouldn't try to dot our I's and cross our T's. It shouldn't mean we shouldn't try to try to learn, but man, if I need if I'm in trouble, I go after God. Huh? I'm begging and squealing like a stuck pig, and I'm doing whatever it takes. Because I want help. And then afterwards he 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 helps me. But then I say, well, you know, you didn't have to, you didn't have to go to that extreme. You could have just believed me and I would have done it anyway. Well, I, whatever it takes, get the answer. We got all this legalistic stuff. If I don't do this and if I do this wrong and if I don't, hold it. God loves you. Those people that Jesus walked around healing and delivering and blessing, they didn't even have the written word. They didn't do, they didn't have anything. All they did was they heard about Jesus and they believed him. They believed in him. They believed he could do it. They'd touch the hem of his garment. They'd put, they'd wash the mud out of their eyes. Hmm. It's not how hard you pray or how many people you have praying for you. Huh? Well, I've got, I've got 83 people praying for them. I'm on the prayer chain. Well, that's good. Do it. But that's not what gets it done. You can get it done with your faith. Now, I'm not saying don't. we got prayer chains here. We, we send out a prayer list every week. If you've got a need, let us get it on there. Having us agreeing with you isn't going to hurt it any. Huh? I might ask you to pray for me or with me. I'm not dependent on your prayer, but it sure does help. I'm dependent on my God and what he said and what I trust him in, and, but, but, but it doesn't hurt. The Bible tells us to pray one for another. And sometimes when I can't get it done, you're praying for me gets it done. Well, if you can just ask and believe, huh? Ask and believe. You need healing? Ask him and believe. How do you believe? Well, you, it, it'd be a good idea to find every scripture that you can find in the book about healing and read it. Huh? It would probably do you good to, to, to listen to every message that somebody preached about healing and faith. It would probably be good to keep exposing yourself to that and keep letting it go in and go in and go in because sometimes something's going to click in there. The Word's going to come alive inside of you. Well, I need to cut off. I've already, I'm, I'm at my 30 minutes. I need to cut off. It's not how strong you are or tough you are. It's how tough he was and how strong he was. Hmm? It doesn't, it's okay to be weak. Well, I'm just weak. I'm just getting, that's okay. God kind of loves to pro prove himself strong when we are weak. God kind of likes for me to get into a place where I just cry and go, oh, God, I need you. He said, 
That's what I wanted to hear. Let me show you what I can do. Situation look impossible? Not impossible for him. Well, I love Matthew 18. It says, and I'll quit here, but it says, <coughs> Jesus said, I'll give you the keys to the kingdom. And he said, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. One way or the other, I don't know which of those was first. I had it there, but I didn't want to read it. But what, what's he saying? He's saying, I, I just use that as a, I just use that as a, as a help, as a guide for me. If it's not happening in heaven, then it's not supposed to be happening in my life. You hear me? There's not any sickness in heaven. There's not any poverty in heaven. There's not any want in heaven. There's not any depression in heaven. There's not any discouragement in heaven. There's not any sorrow in heaven. And so I just pray like this. I just say, Father, your word says I'm healed. I believe it. Doesn't matter if I see it or feel it or anything else. I believe it. I believe it not because of what my senses tells me, what my body tells me. I believe it because you said it. I believe it because you took those stripes for me, Jesus. Father, I'm, I'm not supposed to be broke. And this is the way I usually pray with that. I say, Father, teach me where I'm spending your money wrong. Help me correct some of that stuff. But you want to bless me abundantly. Does this make sense? He, he wants to find you right where you are. I don't know what it is that you need faith for. But I do know that Isaiah 55 says that he sends his word, and his word will produce what he sent it to do. It will accomplish what he said it would and what he sent it to do. The Bible says he sent his word and healed us. Well, Jesus, that's my confession, and I'm holding to it. Hmm? Okay, we're done. Do you understand what I'm saying? You want to, you wanna, if you're praying for something, find out if God promised it in the Word. A lot of the stuff you'll know He promised it because you heard me or somebody say it, but, but, but don't let that be enough. You hunt it up and read the Scripture and say, Father, you promised it. Jesus, our high priest, is sitting right there next. I didn't finish reading that a while ago. He's sitting right there making intercession for us. So he says, hold to our confession. What's our confession? Our confession is what God said, what this word says. And any time we line our life up and say in what, what we believe, and we line our, line up, our life up with what this word says, our intercessor is there, and he says, Father, did you hear that? They believe it. Do it. It happens. Yeah, it is, and I'm, I'm trying to preach it all over again, so I'll just stop. Everybody stand. I just want you to know that God loves you, and he wants to do big things in your life. He's not made it hard. He's made it easy. All we have to do is know that he said it and believe it and receive it. But what if I don't see it? Just keep on believing it. If you just keep on believing it, it's got to come. Hmm? If he said it. And if it is delayed, you might check because there might be something in your life that he's trying to work on and fix. And if he just gives it to you, you won't pay attention to that and you won't fix it and you'll be in the same jam again later on. So pay attention and say, okay, Lord. I always say, Lord, I don't know what's going on, but I believe you to get me out of this mess and I'm believing you for help. Show me anything I need to change. 
show me anything I need to fix. And then when he shows me, I just make the decision. I make the choice. Father, I'm going to fix that. I choose to fix that. And the Holy Spirit comes in and helps me fix it. If you're here or you're watching this online or on TV and you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, right now, why don't you just say this? Lord Jesus, I ask you to come into my heart and save me. You died on the cross for me, and I receive that price. I give you my life. I want to live it for you. If you say that and mean it, something begins to happen on the inside of you, and your life just starts to take off, and it just gets better and better and better. And after you say it, after you get saved, you need to get baptized in water. After you get saved, you need to get committed to God. You need to get into the Word. You need to spend time talking to Him. And just let Him take you where He wants to take you. Hey, I love you. Thank you for listening to me. I hope I said something that will help your faith. So, Holy Spirit, bring the things back to our mind through this day and through this week. And when we face these situations, we ask you just to bring something to our mind that clicks and that we know you're our great provider, Father, and that you'll take care of it. We thank you. We love you. And I pray for these folks, God. I just pray that you bless them. I pray that you bless them in every area of their life. Give you praise and glory and honor. Pray it in your name, Jesus. Amen. Jesus is wonderful, and I love you, and I speak blessings into your life. Will you just believe for them this week and receive them? Hey, you have a good day. If you have anything you need to be prayed with or want one of us to agree with you, come on down, and we'll be happy to pray with you.